In this video, we're going to continue working on our athlete player cards by calculating the number of days between the most recent and the max attempt for each athlete. This is going to be a really powerful tool to allow you to see how long it's been since an athlete has been able to be at their max performance. So let's get after it. Okay, so welcome back. And to catch you up from the last video, what we did was we created this athlete player card here and we created the ability to select from a list of different variables from a master data set. And then from that, have the athlete's most recent um, value for that data and then their max attempt for that data. All this is pulling from a master data tab where we have all of our information stored. And for today, we want to be able to calculate what the date was between those two instances, as well as how many days it's been since they've reached their max data. So the one way I like to do this is I'm just going to insert a couple of columns here on the left. And um, basically what I'll do is just kind of make them unformatted. So I'm just going to remove the coloring here from them. And we end up with these um, tabs here. And basically what I'll do is I'm going to have one for a recent date and max date. And in here we'll calculate what the date is for these two attempts and then calculate how many days it was between it. Now for the recent date, um, the formula that we're going to use is um, equals filter and we're going to filter for a couple things. So we're going to filter for all of the dates that that athlete um, has a value as well as all of the dates that that athlete's value is not blank. So we want to filter basically for the most recent time they've done that. So in order to do that, we will index. And if you remember, we called all of our data performance data. And we want to do that when we match for um, date. And we want to do that in performance headers. And when it's not, or when it's an exact match, so that's our first part. So basically what we're doing is taking all of the data and returning all of the dates. Now we want to do that when index um, performance data, whoops, I spelled that wrong, and match for athlete name this time, performance headers, false, we want to do that for when that um, is equal to the athlete name that we have selected. So if I were to close this all off, what you'll see is we'll actually return a list of different dates. Now my text is um, white, so I'm just going to make them all black. So basically 01, um, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, this athlete had... Um, basically um, values for that test. So the next one we want to do is we want to return it for when index performance data comma match. We want to do it for when the test that we've selected this time. So in this case, we've stored the test in I10, which is actually underneath this um, formula tab that it's opened up. So I'm just going to kind of put that I10 in there performance headers, false, and we want to do that when it is equal to not blank. Sorry, does not equal blank. And if I close this off, it won't actually change anything because this athlete has a value for each of these. Now in order to find the most recent date, all we do is take the max of this. So I take this filter formula and wrap it in a max, and then when I hit enter, it's going to give me 2022-0130. And basically, that is the most recent date that this athlete has a value for the bench press. If we were to go to the bench press and find athlete six, athlete six on 2021, there's their bench press. If I were to delete that and go back to my tab, now it's going to give me the value of um, 2022-0125 because there's no longer a value in that last date. So we'll put that back. We'll put our formula back together. So that's how we would do that. Now for the maximum date, 
Um, I'm just going to make sure that I've kind of blocked in all the, same, the right things because I want to be able to drag this down. So J6 ref refers to the athlete name. So I'm going to put dollar signs in front of that to lock it in. And then the I10, we want to keep the same column. So we'll lock that in. And if I drag this down, it should work. Whoops. If I drag this down, it should work. There we go. We have all of our dates. I will just fix the formatting here. There we go. Okay. So now what we want to do is calculate the max date. We can basically use the same formula. So I'll copy this formula and I'm going to go under max date and put this in. And the only um, difference that we have to make is now um, instead of the instead of the value equaling or does not equal blank, what we want it to be equal to is their max performance. So in this case, K10. When I hit enter, it's going to give me basically my values. So there we go. Um, I'll delete these for one sec. And I'm just going to fix my formatting here so it looks okay. There we go. So basically on 2022-0120, this, this athlete had the value of 183. So let's look that up, 2022-0120. We'll go to data, 0120, athlete six. 2022-0120, 183, there it is. Okay, so if we were to change that and put their max on 2022-0130, so we can go back to our data. Let's give them a max of, I don't know, 400 on this date. You can see that all of this changes. Now their max and their recent are the exact same and the, the dates were on the exact same. So I'll hit undo to kind of put that back to normal. So because we've left this all wide open, I'm just going to block off the column. I should be able to drag that down as we are. I'll fix the formatting quickly. Um, we want inside borders to be thin and then outside border to be thick. Now what it is, is just that um, we have to calculate the difference between these two dates. So what I can do is equals, say equals days, open this up. The end date is going to be my max date, comma. The start date is going to be my recent date. When I close this off, it's going to give me a value of minus 10. Well, it's been 10 days since that athlete has hit their maximum value in this. I don't want this to be a minus. So what I'll do is minus one and I'll multiply that. So now we see it's 10 days. And to make this just a little bit more visually appealing, I'll type in comma or sorry, um, quotations space days. There we go. So now it's just telling me that it's been 10 days since they've hit their maximum. I can basically drag this down. I'll fix all of my formatting. There we go. So now we know it's been 10 days since they've hit their max bench press, 15 days since they've hit their max squat, um, counter movement jumps 15 days, non-counter movements five days, and 20 days since they've hit their max trap bar. Now we probably don't want this part on our sheet, so all I can do is right click and hide that. And now we have a pretty useful little player card where we can see how long it's been since an athlete has been at their max. So this allows us to make different training decisions on what we want to do moving forward, depending on this information. In the next video, what we'll do is calculate the status and then begin to turn this into a little bit of a dashboard. So I hope this video helps you out. If it does, please like and subscribe to the channel. Share this with a coach that you think might get some value from it. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.